This panel is very near and dear to my heart because some of you may know me as a graphics person, but I really started in graphics because I got to work with the stats people and they really helped me understand the game, understanding sort of what made a team win or not win or what made a, team, a player good or not good. So I'm very excited to this panel with our panelists and I just want to start one by one to let you guys introduce yourselves and what you guys do. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Carol Boyle. I'm a senior creative director at ESPN up in uh, Bristol. It's really great to be here with everyone. Um, hopefully, I will contribute from my creative side and my team. Actually, it's all my team, uh, how we take data and, and use it in so many different applications for different programming we do. Hi, my name is Brian Bray. I work for Ross Video. Uh, I work out of the Creative Services Division, and I uh, help manage our virtual production team. Uh, I think for this conversation, we'll talk a little bit more about the work we're doing with NBC and Sunday Night Football. We provide all the virtual uh, uh, graphics and layout uh, in-game that you would see during the, during the game. Great, thank you. Um, per von Rosen, Per von Rosen, or Per, uh, like the fruit that I'm known as in this country. Um, Broadcast product manager for Sport Radar. Been doing it for two years since we started it. Uh, I'm originally a graphics operator, so I'm definitely from that background as well. Um, and yeah, I'm here because I just took the, took the stance that data is what drives broadcast, and that's what I live for, and probably will die for uh, eventually. But uh, thank you. Let's hope not. Yeah, let's hope not. Thank you. Kind words. Yes. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Elliot Weiss. I am the senior coordinating producer uh, on the broadcast products and services department of MLB. Uh, my background is production, um, and my main responsibilities are to improve our StatCast product, um, develop it for broadcasters in particular, and deal with, I uh, shouldn't say deal with, but manage broadcaster relations as well. Thank you, guys. So I would really like to start with Per to discuss the new data that's available now with the advancement of technology with you know, either putting chips on players or in balls and bats or the image-based technology. Can you let the audience know sort of the new data that's available for, for teams and for broadcasters to be able to access? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so when I started working in broadcast, you know, the, the data that we put on air was pretty much touchdowns, fumbles, points, assists. Um, and uh, we got pretty bored with that pretty quick. You know, so therefore, I was actually a part of, of collecting tracking data in Europe for soccer. And that later spread over here to the US, where obviously with NFL Next Gen Stats, uh, you're collecting X and Y positional data. So you know where the players are at all times. You know where the ball is at all times. And from that, you can derive a bunch of different uh, advanced statistics that will tell you more about the circumstances of the touchdown. Uh, so I think that's, that's really the biggest thing that is coming to sports, is that here's a data point, there was a touchdown, great. But from that, you can actually start uh, showing also, here's a chart of the person that missed the coverage, or the person that uh, beat the coverage, rather. You can have the positive spin on that story. Um, and same thing with StatCast, you will hear a little bit more from Elliot here. You know, it's, it's about it's about just bringing those circumstances to the story as a data point that will come from us. And us at Sport Radar, we're investing heavily in that. We are working both with NBA Advanced Stats, where we're doing that for NBA. Uh, we're also working with NFL Next Gen, which, which is coming forth uh, a lot quicker. Uh, and that's just the XY positional with the chips. I mean, then you also have more advanced algorithms. I mean, baseball is a prime example with all the different stats that me being European, I have no idea what they're about. But I see that they're important because people respond to them and they create long, long stories about people discussing it. So I think that's really where we're going. And a data company like us, we need to keep up with that. We need to be able to calculate the stats. We need to be able to make, under, uh, we need to be able to understand those stats so we can give it to broadcasters for them to understand. Because no one is going to be more of an expert of data and data visualizations than the data company itself. Um, so that's what I have to say. Do you think we'll see some of that kind of data and that kind of storytelling capabilities in the Olympics? I know that the Olympics are working uh, very, very hard with that. Uh, the Winter Olympics that passed, uh, they did have XY position data for a lot of different sports. 
Uh, they even did tests prior to the games if they were going to put it on air or not. They ended up not doing it because it wasn't reliable. Um, and that's a little bit of our, our discussion you know, before. Usually you start with something as, as a short piece. It's something to impress. And then it becomes more and more reliable as you use it on air. And in the end, it's actually going to be there all the time. So long answer to a short question, yes, it will definitely be on air during the Olympics at one point. There are a lot of challenges to be, there's so much data that's now available. It, it, it's definitely challenging to A, find the screen space to display that data, to, to even have the time with you know, the actual game action and, and being able to display this information in a way that fans at home and even a casual fan can understand it. So Brian, maybe you could discuss this and while we do this, can we roll his video and you could talk about some of the things that you guys have been working on in Sunday Night Baseball to overcome that? Football. I'm sorry, Sunday Night Football? I'm so sorry, Sunday Night I'd football. love to do baseball. Uh, yeah, so um, you know, a couple challenges that you run into, and I'm sure most people in the room will be thinking about that, is one, space to put AR. AR is actually a graphic overlay on top of the camera. Uh, we understand where it is in space because of data, but that's really what it is. So the image can be blown if it isn't set up right or that we get uh, folks and folks or paraphernalia or, or balls or you know, things that can get in the way of that graphic. So using space is, is, is a big thing that we have to try to do. Um, another challenge is obviously is getting data, getting it quickly, and getting it in, a, in a, the timely fashion that the producer or director want to display the graphics. Um, so when we started four years ago, uh, we would need, <laughs> we'd say 30 seconds, we needed a couple minutes to get stuff in place, right? Um, now we're, we've got it down to where the data's coming in pretty quickly. We're pulling from SMT. Uh, we're pulling in both game stats and uh, live stats as they happen and historical stats. Um, placing that, putting it into the graphics, and then putting that graphics in a place where their players aren't and doing it quickly so that we can do it in between plays. Um, I think if anyone has seen Sunday Night Football, you've seen we've, we, we can get that up in four seconds, four or five seconds, pretty quick. Get it up, help tell the story, help use some of the new graphics to tell those stories and get out of it as quick as you can. So I would love to, to roll the, um, the Ross video from them because you got that, guys? I would really like to ask you how much um, input or how much discussion do you have with a, the production team and the talent and whatnot to be able to get the right piece of data and, and format in a way because it's it's very complicated information and it's got to be in like little digestible chunks. Uh, you know, so a story of a, of a graphic, right? Let's take a, uh, a quarterback comparison graphic. You'll see some of these graphics come up here. Um, it starts with your producer. He knows what he wants to do to help tell a story. He knows the pieces he wants. So you've got certain things that you're going to do every game. They're always ready to go. But then you also have custom pieces for every game that you're going to create that week of that game, kind of tell that game story. You're going to give that producer as many things as he can come up with. And it's, it's interesting to see what doesn't make air. Um, I like to see an Emmys of, for Emmys for people who didn't, you know, what didn't air. You know what I'm saying? There's some really neat stuff. But uh, he'll give you a list of things that, that he wants to see. You create that list, you have that ready for him as a tool set, and then if the game dictates, you can get different things pulled up. Um, the challenge, though, sometimes is that you've got to foresee ahead of time what the game story is going to be, right? Who knew first game of the season in Green Bay that uh, Aaron Rodgers was going to blow out, you know, you think his knee's blown out, he goes and do it halftime, he's done, right? No. He comes back. <laughs> He wins the game, right? So you can't foresee that story, but you've got to try to prepare graphics that are, as you're saying, very complicated graphics, and get them ready to go to, tell, to help tell stories in a, an open way that you can pull different data in to change the, the conversation as it comes along. Um, the letting the talent know what's happening, that happens in a commercial break sometimes. You literally, uh, you know, you listen to our producer, our, our producer Fred Gadelli, will tell Al and Chris, Hey guys, this is what we're gonna do. This is what you're gonna see. This, this is what I'm about to throw at your graphics. And these guys are so good and so professional, they pick it up so quick. And to watch your stuff out on the field and see them so eloquently tell the story in less than a minute and a half of time to prepare, it's amazing. That's why these guys are really good. So Kara, I'd love to know your perspective because you come from more of a creative background and how are you guys and your team trying to visualize this da data again to, to make sure that the right story is being told um, on air. Sure, and I think a lot um, from ESPN, we do such a multitude of different types of virtual reality. Um, we do it in events, so Monday Night Football. 
Um, as Brian's saying, you know, we definitely create graphics virtually for that and working with stat and, uh, stats and data. But we also, back in Bristol, have our studios, too. And we actually have them in several locations. So we're doing a lot of green screen execution. We have a full green studio. So we're really able to tell some very uh, more long form storytelling uh, with stats and working with talent in our production team, which has been really great. Um, I know we have a, a reel I put together that kind of shows the variety of that, um, you know, within studio. And then um, I do have where we did around the horn. So that was like a whole other launch of working with augmented reality and doing virtually in a little different way. But um, in all those executions, it's definitely challenging. You know, you want to first tell a good story. So that's really collaborating with our production team, our research, and our stat group. Um, and then my team, you know, really works hard to hopefully try to innovate in, in making it the high production value and then also just, you know, really making it so it's interesting to the fan. So uh, I know I have a, t uh, a clip yeah. to roll. There is a, a video from ESPN if we could just roll their, their clip and it's a little sizzle here. But it's got to be challenging because you guys cover so many sports. And just having yeah. the time and the creative juices to be able to, to display all this information, like basically 24-7. It is. And we're definitely segmented. So we have teams. So like for college game day, we have, um, you know, a team production team that we work with. Um, you know, our actual virtual team is fairly small. It's about three people that work on a regular basis. So they basically cover all the different properties. So, you know, here, this is uh, an example of within our green screen that we can literally change the whole environment. So that's something we're really excited about and we want to keep pushing the envelope. Um, as a creative, I think it's something too, over the years, you've seen that technology get better and certain render engines get better uh, to be able to really provide, you know, high quality. Um, again, it's something that we're using with Flow here <laughs> to, uh, to be a real great sales tool. Um, when we launched our new sports center set back in 2014, um, that definitely virtual has capabilities. So we really use that to really help drive uh, revenue in terms of our ad work with our ad partners. So um, it's just, it's endless when you think about it. Yeah. Especially if you're a creative person and you have some data behind it, like you get super excited. I, I see guys in rooms just, you know, dream about all the different ways that we can use lines and arrows and put things on the field and they're like little kids in a candy store. Sometimes. No, and that's a great point. And we work so closely and, and knowing it's like, okay, how we can execute that. And, you know, I think, you know, Elliot, we were saying how the days of rows and columns of stats, you know, it's still out there. We still have it. But it's like, okay, that's boring, you know? And I think some of it too is like, give us the time to tell that story um, is also something that, you know, we need to work with. If game time, as we're saying, is tight or even within studio, a regular studio programming. So I'd love to transition over to Elliot and talk about the unique sort of um, way that MLB executes their data collection and, um, and displaying of this information because they're both the data collector and sort of the graphics vendor for both broadcast and venue. So maybe you can explain to the audience how that works from, from your league. Uh, I, can explain, I can explain some of it, yes. Um, well, StatCast is an interesting, interesting beast because no one knew what it was going to be four years ago. No one had any idea what was going to become of it. Um, and even now, it's still growing in multiple directions. Um, the information is available, some of the information is available uh, on mobile apps. It's distributed to teams. Uh, and then, of course, you have the broadcast part of it. Um, so we are a league, but we are and a data collection vendor and also a broadcast uh, vendor for gear and equipment and operators in some case. Can so. we roll the can we roll the MLB video cuz there's some examples of mm. of some of the things that Elliot's talking about especially the really cool stat cast. Um, so at first things started off you know like this where it was these home run trails and everyone would use them over and over and over and over again um, and they got boring. Um, 
And like we were saying before about, um, and they add to it, but they don't necessarily always tell you the story. This tells you a little bit of a story. That, that had a hit probability, 92%. Uh, this, it's good information, but it doesn't necessarily tell the story. And that's the kind of thing that we're working towards now, is the context. Uh, these numbers are all fun and interesting, um, but to get the context in is the challenge. So how are you trying to overcome that? that issue are you working with like the teams themselves are you working directly with the broadcasters is it the talent um and how do you get them to frame it in the right way so that this information actually makes sense to you i mean a, a, a very experienced fan i think will understand this but someone who's just tuning into the world series will be like i don't know what that means really right well, stuff like that like the pitch cast stuff there i think that adds a lot of value to to a show and and broadcasters have told us so they they love that stuff um, but to overcome the challenge of context, uh, working with the broadcasters is the first step. And we've polled them, we've sent out questionnaires, we talk to them, places like this, and we set up individual meetings, and, and we get their ideas first, because this really is a collaborative project. It has to be a collaborative project. We can't just do it by ourselves and expect people to say, oh, okay, no problem. Um, but now we are starting to look outside of our organization to people who have work, been working in broadcast for a long time, but may be able to think outside the box and think about new ways to present this data. Um, whether it can technically be done right away, to just TBD, but there's gotta be some outside of the box ideas that we're not thinking of. We're so into what this is and what it has been that you need a little help. Some of this data is so um, rich and compelling that um, there could be some objections from teams, maybe from sport ops, about not displaying it. I know that I've worked on several projects, and I will. The teams will re remain nameless. We started, you know, putting some of the advanced stats up, and someone from, you know, the coaching staff's like, "No, no, no, no! You can't show that in the venue. That's like we don't. Our team will not allow you to put that up." Do you guys ha have you guys experienced any of that? Um, so, yes. Yes, not not very toughly though. I mean, I used to work with Elliot over at MLB, and it was I was the operator, and Elliot was the producer. So there, I mean, we tried looking for the positive spin of the story, and I mean now at Sport Radar, we get challenged maybe ten times a day from broadcasters where they say, "Come up with good storylines for us that we want to use in our ROS or our VisRT or, or um, you know, general create a content package around." I mean, yes, we do tend to want to spin the positive story because that's, that is usually what fans want too. You want that, aha, uh -huh, that is why that person really does well. You know, because he does that, that out route in just a matter of split of a second. Um, so working with the leagues, that is what we prioritize. That is what we want to do because that is also what we see is doing the best in the market. Um, will there occasionally be a story where someone is on a, on a slump? Yes, because that is a part of storytelling as well. You know, there's hot streaks and there's cold streaks. It's part of the game. You know, both of that broadcasters want and they need. And even if a league necessarily don't want you to talk about the cold streaks, etc., we owe that to the fans. And I mean, we owe, we sit on all the rich data that, you know, people at home will never get close to seeing. So it's our responsibility to bring it out of the data and give to broadcasters so they can use, again, the vendors that visualize it so neatly on air um, because it starts there and then it goes down the chain until it's on air and you know hopefully my dad at home in Sweden will watch and be oh okay that's how football works you know um, we have a minute left I, does anyone have a question for any of our panelists before we wrap it up I guess not. Can, um, just really quickly, just one by one, can you sort of tell us like the coolest thing that you've seen in AR stats that you've seen in like the last year? Ooh. Oh boy. Um, actually, you guys are doing some really cool stuff, <laughs> I have to say. Thank you. You know, um, I think that, God, it's just like all over, you know, it's so impressive how I think, you know, we ESPN was starting it, like I said, probably about eight years ago and we were just kind of dipping our toe in the water. So, you know, I just think, 
I look at even like outside of our own country, quite honestly. So we're looking for inspiration or we're looking for like, how can we do things differently? There's so much going on that statistically, like you said, bars, charts, and, and, and anything in between. Mm -hmm. As long as we can get out of the numbers and rows. Yes. Um, so the stuff that we showed uh, for Sunday Night Football, pretty much everything you saw in there was through our, uh, our, our Ross expression system. If you're in this room, I'm going to assume you what the Ross expression system is. But we pretty much exclusively run that. Uh, for the Super Bowl, we did bring in uh, Frontier, which is our Unreal Engine uh, product that we have. And we did some really neat stuff, and we, it was our first real chance to put something on broad, you know, put something out like that um, as far as Sunday Night Football goes. And we spent months getting ready for that. And so we ended up um, digitizing the players, uh, seven of the players, and uh, that, was a, that was a neat process to go through to put them in a 3D world and then put them out on the field. And so I think the last shot that we showed was the opening shot of the Super Bowl. Um, but I think the Unreal Engine is going to bring some really neat things to the table and allow us to move, that too. move objects, players, uh, geometry all over the place. We can do a lot of that with, ex with expression side, and I'm sure you guys with, with your product, but the, um, I think that the future is going to be coming through those gaming systems and what they can do with them. And, and now it's just what can you think of? What's, what is your imagination? I mean, it's, it's literally going to be there's no limit. Yeah, it was when I actually saw the live spray chart from StatCast system because that was what I dreamt of and tried to accomplish <laughs> during three years at MOVAM. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, and then a year after I leave, they, they did it. So I'm very happy and you know, I think that's where, where also the experience lies because you can do that now live. You can pull up a player's all home runs at a certain stadium, uh, ballpark, ballpark, you taught me that. Um, <laughs> when the count is a special way, it's a two, three count, and you can all of a sudden, this is how he hits at Yankee Stadium at two and three. I think, you know, that tells a story, and when I saw that, it was one of the happiest uh, moments of my life. Well, we're happy to make you happy, yeah. Pear. Um, <laughs> real, real quick, uh, probably the coolest thing I saw was um, one, of the, the wild card, one of the wild card games for, in, uh, I think it was Cubs, and Cubs game. Uh, ESPN actually did a secondary show, uh, either on ESPN2 or ESPN News, I can't remember which, uh, with, it was entirely StatCast show. And it got a great reception, it was entertaining, it was fun to watch, and all they did was talk StatCast and advanced metrics, and they, it was limited to some degree, but I thought it was a, a step in a really great direction. Well, I think that's all the time that we have. But um, I want to thank all the panelists. It was a really great discussion, and I can't wait to see what we're going to um, have in this upcoming year. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.